the Ministry of Urban Development uh, has been in the news for trying to implement the vision of the Prime Minister, whether it's in terms of creating new urban centers in terms of smart cities, whether it's in terms of Amrut, uh, whether it's in terms of affordable housing. For, uh, tell us what are the priorities of the Urban Development Ministry at this point? No, the priority, you, you know, uh, there is a huge infrastructure deficit in our cities. Uh, and there is now a new focus on the urban sector, on the urban agenda, which is manifest in the shape of a number of new missions which were launched two years ago. Smart cities and Amrut you mentioned, and Swachh Bharat Mission Urban also is part of the same set of initiatives. So the focus is on bridging this infrastructure deficit, the critical sectors like water supply, sewerage network, green spaces. Because we are at, on the cusp of a major demographic transition. See, the, our urbanization level is low global comparisons all whether we compare with other uh, you know developed countries in any continent or even emerging countries like brazil or china we are just 31 percent 2011 census but now we are urbanizing rapidly so we not only have to wipe out you know the deficit in infrastructure which got built up over the years but also cater for another 375 million people which are going to be added to the existing 375. So that is the scale of work which is on our hands. So that is the emphasis on uh, bridging this uh, infrastructure deficit and also on reforms so that the cities become, uh, you know, more livable. Livable and they are able to uh, do it on their own without and move, steer them away from the culture of almost in total dependence on grants from the uh, central and state governments. They become sustainable, Absolutely. financially Absolutely. viable. Uh, now, the Smart Cities mission has been around for almost three years. In a couple of months, it will be three years. How would you assess the progress of the Smart City mission? The progress is extremely good. I think the expectations are very huge. Right. And uh, people, you know, expect that there will be brand new uh, townships springing up. That is not the smart cities vision. And one of the, you know, measures of these high expectations is that what we forget, it is not three years. Actually, we will be completing two years of the launch of the mission, both smart cities in Amrut, in June this year. So it's one year and about eight months. And one of the most distinguishing features of Smart Cities Mission is that, there is that the implementation mechanism is entirely new. SPVs have to be set up, which are companies. And the whole idea of setting up these SPVs is that the, uh, there is a professional management in the cities and the decision making is faster so the first few, the, you know, the, after the mission was launched, there was a process of selecting the cities, which again was new, challenge method. The challenge right? fund. No, that is a different thing. Yeah. The smart cities were selected through so a competitive the, process. That, that you know that, right? yeah. this is all the public domain. Yeah. So the first set of 20 cities were actually announced in January 2016, right. just a year ago. So I think we have to be conscious of that, you know, and be realistic in our assessment of how fast the progress has been. So all these cities have established the SPVs. They have appointed full-time CEOs. They have appointed professional staff, you know, the CIOs, CFOs, and all that. And then they have uh, procured the PMCs. So that is the first step. Then they have been capitalized these SPVs, in the grants from the central government, matching grant from the state governments or the cities themselves. That was the second part. And third was the project preparation. Now the project preparation means that whatever the vision of the city was, which came out through a hugely consultative process and a 
unprecedented degree of uh, citizen involvement and the different cities uh, came out with different visions of what they will like to be, where they will like to be 10 years, 20 years hence, translating those into actual projects and project report and then bidding them out, contracting and then the real work will begin. So you have to therefore understand and everybody needs to understand that the first one year or so will be consumed by these essential basic activities and then the action on ground will, will begin. Them. I can tell you that a large number of projects in these first 20 cities are now poised to take, take off. off. And these span a whole lot of uh, sectors, you see. It is command and control centers, solar uh, rooftop uh, you know, plants, Wi-Fi spots in the cities, smart roads with smart poles and all that, uh, affordable housing, some iconic projects in some cities like riverfront development, the kind of which the kind of which has taken place in some cities already in the country, like you know the, you know the what happened in Ahmedabad, for example. So that is being replicated by many cities. Lakes are being beautified. So a whole range of uh, projects are either get, you know, they have commenced implementation or they are poised to take off. Uh, the 2017 and 18 will really see a lot of action on ground. Fantastic. Good to know that the progress of the Smart Cities uh, mission is really getting to its logical progress. Uh, now the role of technology in the new urban centers is increasingly growing. You talked of command centers, you talked of CIOs. Uh, how do you see so the Ministry of Urban Development plays a nodal role in making sure technology and functionality are met and technology becomes one small ingredient but an important ingredient in developing centres of future. No, this was, you see, deeply ingrained in the smart city mission and in the uh, sensitization exercises, series of exercises which we have held with the uh, CEOs and municipal commissioners of these cities, it has been made abundantly clear and I think everybody has understood that smart city is one of the key things about smart city is that you leverage, leverage you know, uh, state of art technology, the information technology to improve the delivery of services, whether it, are, it is you know, through the single window clearance systems, various certificates, the permissions for, uh, uh, you know, construction permits or uh, surveillance cameras uh, for improved security, uh, especially at the so-called dark spots, uh, uh, monitoring the uh, municipal workers, so, you know, the sweep, street sweeping and garbage collection, uh, smart meters. So these are all in every dimension. It has actually, you know, to become an integral part of the thinking yeah. and uh, planning process. And we are facilitating this, you know, by making, uh, exposing them to the best practices in the world and uh, setting up uh, things like uh, smart uh, exchange, you know, so that they all don't have to uh, learn from the beginning and learn from each other also. So that's what uh, we are doing. Thank you. Now, the role of civic bodies in municipal corporations and local bodies is very critical when you implement new schemes, whether it's a Swachh Bharat, which in some way dovetails into the, uh, you know, smart city mission right. or in the Amrut. How have they been um, responsive when it comes to either the Swachh Bharat or Amrut or Smart City, how and how do you see their role in the future? No, urban local bodies are at the center of the whole thing. You see, they represent the local people. They have to implement. In all these missions, Smart Cities and uh, Swachh Bharat in particular, the citizen engagement has been extremely, you know, intense in Smart Cities when the uh, cities were preparing their, you know, vision, their uh, plan, identifying their key priorities, they and we uh, made sure, you know, that they engaged 
with the citizens on a very, very, uh, you know, in, in a very intensive manner through conventional methods as well as through the social media. If you look at the, you know, number of people who gave their inputs, it's humongous. In Swachh Bharat, again, uh, you know, through the, we have seen, uh, through the process of uh, Swachh Sarvekshan, which we launched in the uh, first time we had it uh, in 2016, early 2016. And this year, uh, this process is now coming to a conclusion. We expanded the number to, five, to cover 500 cities and we started the process six, seven months earlier. And citizen feedback was made a very important element of the entire you know, evaluation process. So that uh, really put the citizens and the urban local bodies in very close touch and the immense amount of pressure and feedback was generated from the citizens, you know, on their Civic elected, uh, you know, corporators and mayors as well as the officials to do well. So uh, this competitive spirit has been unleashed through citizen participation. Now, Amrit has been something which is at the center of the urban development ministry. Yeah. How, how do you see the Amrut mission unfolding in the next two mm -hmm. to three years? So Amrut mission is in some senses the most important because it is focused on two critical sectors, water supply and sewerage. And at the end of this mission, two crore new water connections, two crore households would get, get water connection. I mean, most of our cities, they do not have cent percent coverage or 24 by 7 water supply. And similarly, the uh, sewerage network is uh, in a very, very, uh, you can say, primitive stage in many you know, smaller cities especially. So here, uh, you know, rather than spreading our resources thinly, unlike in GN and RM, but too many priorities were there. These are the two key priorities and a lot of all the resources are getting, you know, concentrated on these. And uh, the, uh, in order to fast track implementation, we have sanctioned the plans for these 500 cities for the entire mission period. Already we have done that and we have uh, left the actual project sanctions entirely to the states, you know, so that they don't have to come for each project here. And a lot of uh, flexibility we have provided to the states in choosing technology, in, uh, you know, fungibility of funds, in moving them across uh, projects, across cities, so that we, uh, you know, are, uh, we, we implement the projects faster. You know, one of the key focal points, especially in smart cities and Amrut, uh, is involvement of private sector in terms of private-public partnership. That model is being experimented with in a big way, in a scalable way. How would you assess the success of that, though it's at the initial stages? PPP uh, model has been tried already you see, in earlier also in many cities and with varying degrees of uh, success. So we have tried to promote this on a much larger scale, uh, both in smart cities and Amrut. We have brought the cities together many times, brought them face to face with the private sector and, you know, uh, propagated the best practices and try to identify the problems which resulted in PPP models not working in some uh, cities and which made you know, many people, both private sector and the governments, little wary of uh, doing this thing. We have you know, tried to uh, convince the states and urban local bodies that if you uh, rely on uh, implementation 
dependent solely on government money, then your total envelope will be very, very limited. So if, you, if we have to you know, catch up and enlarge the scope of projects, you have to get private sector. Absolutely. But private sector will come in only if there is you know, a return on guarantee investment. of payments, etc. So you have to ring fence the funds, you have to create escrow account, etc. So these things have been done in order to ensure. And also by encouraging the urban local bodies to go for credit rating and municipal bonds, because when you go uh, to the market for bonds, then they will have to be linked to a you know uh, kind of security of payments, repayment, etc. You know, so it's a very important <laughs> point you bring up, and though it's a little unrelated, but you know what's happened with the Noida toll or Gurgaon toll uh, in some way have raised questions about the tightness of contracts and the nature of those contracts and how long are they applicable. Uh, though they were black and white, some gray areas were kind of brought in and these, it is a very bad example to set for PPP especially and uh, that's why you possibly talk about guarantee of payment. What is your view on that? No, on, on what? On, on the, in what happened specifically with the uh, no, I, will, I will not like to comment on any specific project. You see, there are good, there are good examples and there are bad examples. I don't know which is a good or bad. I will not like that. I think there are case studies and uh, I mean, everybody can uh, figure out where the weaknesses have been. So, it so. was this point of contention, sir, was that it was defined as a public road versus private road. Mm -hmm. And because the concessionaire had made its money as it projected in the feasibility report when they gave it, uh, a group of people got together to say it's a public road and hence the access should be free, which was in contravention with the terms of the contract by which the concessionaire was awarded. So from a long-term partnership on, you know, Ministry of Urban Development will in some way is infrastructure. I mean, it's not infrastructure, but it is infrastructure. So it does the, in some way conflict the stated policy. I mean, it was done in a previous regime, but the, the contracts of government of India or contracts of government of India regime change does not really change that. Uh, so in that context, I asked you that. Now coming back to affordable housing. Now the Prime Minister in his speeches, in the last three speeches has talked about affordable housing and how he wants to make sure that everyone in this country, especially the poor, have a roof above their head. And while there have been strides, there's a long way to go in affordable housing. What is the Ministry of Urban Development doing to make sure that the targets on affordable housing are met? No, the uh, Prime Minister's Awas Yojana is implemented by the Housing and Urban Poverty Elevation Ministry. You see. So they are uh, steering this program. And uh, a number of, uh, you are aware, you know, new initiatives have been announced in the budget which will further, uh, you know, give uh, impetus. impetus to this whole thing. Ministry of Urban Development, you see, we are uh, telling the uh, states and the urban local bodies to uh, you know go in for transit oriented development for example so that you have more you know uh, i mean more land more uh, dwelling units can be constructed in the cities closer to uh, the uh, workplaces closer to mass transit uh, stations we are helping the uh, you know cities and the state governments identify pockets of uh, government land which is lying unutilized. grossly underutilized, suboptimally utilized, and go for redevelopment, where the total built-up area is much more than currently available, and uh, the. Financing is uh, generated through ISP. sale of you know commercial space, etc. So that this is not dependent on uh, budget. So these are the kind of initiatives we are taking. So over the next, um, let me get very specific. Over the next three to six months, what are some of the milestones we can see 
the MOD achieving? And through an interaction with business world viewers and readers, would you like to make some new policy announcements or share some things that are not in the public domain? No, no, everything is in the public domain, you see. Nothing is <laughs> uh, sort of uh, confidential or secret. We are a very, very uh, transparent uh, government, transparent ministry. Whatever we do, the new policy documents, even the draft policy, they're all in the public domain for public consultation, etc. So we will only be accomplishing, you know. So now, as I said earlier, the first two years have been focused on putting in place the institutional Framework. arrangements, tying up the finances, you know, create uh, adding to the capacity of the cities and the state so that they can implement these very large missions. So 17 and 18 will be focused on uh, implementation. You're saying we've kept the need, we've kept the foundation. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully you see the Absolutely. last point. What are the challenges or the roadblocks that you may, you see at this point and what are you doing to kind of deal with them? So the because some of these stated the, objectives the, have been yeah, there for a while. The, the, I think one of the challenges is the limited revenues of the cities in our country and their limited capacity. So we are focusing therefore on incentivizing the key reforms you know, so that the cities are in a better position to deliver services to the citizens, in a better position to implement projects and generate more revenues. I mentioned to you the exercise of credit rating for example. Right? This is being undertaken on an un Massive, over 350 cities are for the first time the country going in for credit rating, which will you know, enable them, even if they don't uh, raise bonds, to see where their weaknesses are in their accounting, in their revenue generation, in their governance structure. It will also open them up to public scrutiny. So that is a very big exercise. Number two, we are encouraging them to adopt innovative methods of uh, financing. When bonds is one, value capture financing. We have recently for, you know, finalized the value capture policy framework, which has been circulated to all the states. And we will be asking them to make it a mandatory, you know, part of all project preparation, so that they can, both the state government and urban local bodies can in a systematic manner, garner more, uh, you know, resources. Then we are uh, asking them to focus on, you know, uh, construction permits being issued through a single window integrated system so that ease of doing business improves and all, it's not just business, even for, uh, uh, you know, a home or somebody who wants to build his house or, you know, add uh, to his current dwelling unit, this become very, very easy, hassle free and uh, creating their municipal uh, cadres and adopting more flexible, uh, uh, you know, uh, planning uh, norms. Uh, currently, most of them have very rigid state plans, limited, yeah. which are revised, you know, maybe 15, 20 years. Changes in land use are very difficult. There is uh, too much, uh, I think, uh, focus on uh, segregated land use rather than mixed land use, low FARs. So on uh, planning, finance and governance, these three key areas, reform is our, uh, you know, priority. But since these have to be done by the states, we have to create strong incentives. Absolutely. That is where this whole you know, discussion about this challenge fund which you talked about. Right. We are still in the stages of discussion. Challenge fund is nothing but, you know, larger or stronger incentives linked to some of these key reforms so that the urban transformation becomes a sustainable exercise. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gaba, for talking to Business World. Thank you. Thank we hopefully look forward to thank engaging you. with you sure. so that we can take uh, the good work that the Ministry of Urban Development uh, is doing to be able to come up to the vision of the Prime Minister in terms of Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you.